All right, you know what? That, that so far is my favorite product. The most expensive, the grossest, and also the best. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. And you may notice, actually you probably won't notice at all. I had a moment of chaos where I took my filming area and I decided no more over there. I'm gonna put it in the other side so I don't literally wake up into my filming area. So in the process now of moving everything from there over to the sides, which is gonna take a little bit of time, I'm also decluttering in the meantime and I have no chill. None at all. Like I am being cutthroat <laughs> with this declutter. It's a lot. I'm done hoarding makeup. It's just I, like I can't do it anymore. So I, I am filming it, so <laughs> stay tuned for that. But anyway, um, this video, I found five different products that continually pop up on my TikTok and Instagram feeds and ones that I think would be really interesting and I'm curious about. And so I bought them and we're going to test them. Full day wear test. So if you like these kinds of videos, make sure you check out my full playlist where I've done a whole bunch of these and subscribe. New videos here every single Thursday. And we're gonna start with um, finishing up my eyes because I'm slightly annoyed that I don't have any mascara on. So um, let's just zoom zoom everyone in here. Whoa, no, no one tells you when you're doing these filming things, like setting up cameras and mics and stuff. Like I, I didn't go to school for this. I'm just kind of winging it. Gosh, is that a spider? Ha, huh. got it. I have no time for spiders. It was a small one, like small, like itty bitty one. Okay, so first product. This is a mascara from Tarte, which again, I think I talked about this recently. I haven't heard from them in so long, but they are back and they have a mascara that a lot of people have been loving. And this is the Tartlet Tubing Mascara. And I have a, like a love hate relationship, I feel like with tubing mascaras. Some of them are great and I really like them. And then sometimes I try them and I just wanna rip out all of my eyelashes because I look like Ezra from Emperor's New Groove. It's not cute. <laughs> it's not the look I'm going for, but this girl's lashes look amazing. Like, look at that. That's a nice before and after. Uh, where is my eyelash curly? There it is. <laughs> look at my eyeliner, by the way. Just kind of like one of these hands, you know? <laughs> and it seems to be wearing off awesome. Well. We'll fix that in a minute. Not fully convinced that my liner is even either, but I might just pretend that it is. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta fake it till you make it, you know? All right, let's try this out. So in terms of the wand here, it is one of those very like flexy ones. I'm gonna get mascara all over myself. Little flexy one, just a little bit, not a ton of give there, but these tiny little, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Bristles, that's that's the one. So let's give this a go. There aren't any instructions on package. Just supposed to wrap and lengthen each lash. Glisten, I believe you, Tart. I do. I'm just, I'm not seeing it. I'm gonna try coating like the back too here. I and mean, I'm doing one eye at a time because I think that's usually my downfall with tubing is I let them dry and you don't want to let a tubing mascara dry. If you're gonna add more layers, I mean. You do eventually want them to dry. Oh, wow. You know when you haven't worn mascara or makeup for a while and then you go back to wearing makeup and you're like, wow, it's like, dang girl, that looks good. I was on vacation in case you missed it. It's over on Instagram if you're interested. Okay, I will say it does seem to be adding some length there, right? The, di the difference, again, I don't have anything on this side, so <laughs> the difference will be stark, but I think that this is this is looking good. I'm gonna add a little bit more before it dries up. Ah. I wanna keep adding layers, but I feel like there's gonna be a point of no return that I have to stop. I feel like this is this is the time. This is the time to stop, Rachel. Okay, what do we think? Do we, do we like it? Is it a good level of volume and length? Because I, I think so. It's not so heavy. It's giving more like fluttery, which I kind of like, but I'm getting length. Like it's, do you see that? It's like <laughs> this is a very terrible angle, but like I'm doing this for us. See, it's like touching, touching my eyebrow. The mascara, it, it's touching my eyebrow, everyone. Did I get mascara in my eyebrow? I should have thought that went through. No, okay, we're good. Let's do the other side. I'm curious if this, falls immediately or not. For some reason, the cr the curl I did on this eye is not good. I don't know what happened, uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna try and make it through. Get the back of the lashes. Oh, I already got mascara on my lid. Awesome. Okay, two on this side. I've kind of hit my limit now. Now it's just sort of cleaning it up. Okay, uh, this is not an easy mascara, I will say. Like, I think it looks good. I think it looks good, but I don't think this is like a high, uh, like top of my list, because it, it is a little bit finicky to get it to look right, and you have a very small window to make it do so. Now let's 
clean up my lids here. Oh, I guess I should also clean up my eyeliner. This is what happens. I just immediately, as soon as I get home, I'm just like, could I go for more of like a casual makeup look? I could, but no, I decide to go for like a deep teal liner. <laughs> All right, there we go, that's good enough. But now while we let this mascara dry down a little bit, I may need to recurl. Let's go on to one of two primers. That's right, we are testing two primers today. Number one is the Milk Makeup one. This one is the Pore Eclipse Mattifying Primer. They have a hydrating one, but now they have a mattifying one and people seem to really, really like how the pores look not only upon first application but throughout the day and it's supposed to mattify but it still has skincare elements in it too so it's going to hydrate it but still keep it in that soft matte blurred kind of zone if you want to <laughs> zone your makeup i guess so i bought the mini one because typically i don't like matte but i saw a couple of people saying that they really liked it even though they don't have oily skin so I have hope, but I'm only gonna be applying this to sort of the areas where I tend to see pores or shiniest the most. So like right here, I'm gonna apply it to one side. I just wanna see if I can see, see a difference here. I don't immediately see any sort of a difference. So actually that might be a good test. Let me do one side with just this and not put anything on the other side and see if after I apply all the foundations and stuff that we will be testing if there is any sort of a difference. The next primer, this thing I have seen everywhere. Like everyone is talking about how glowy and beautiful and dewy their skin is with this primer and you can use it on its own. You can mix it in with your foundation, but either way, like just glowy, gorgeous skin. It's by the brand Say, it's the Glowy Super Gel. It's a dewy, illuminating fluid and you can, again, you can mix it in. You can just apply it on its own. World is your oyster. The packaging reminds me of, what's the name of that brand? Oh, it's gonna bother me. It's a UK brand and they have a dewy setting spray. Now I'm curious, I need to know. What is the brand I'm talking about? Okay, I can't find it, but I, I'll find it and I'll put it here because the packaging just like really reminds me of it. It's not important. <laughs> Let's pump some into the hand here. It's very gel-like in consistency. Let's see, are I am I glowy? That's what I was gonna say. This is what happens when you take Rachel out of the studio for like two weeks. I just forget how to talk to people. I'm trying to avoid the area too where I put the other primer and just like applying it around it. I think that looks nice, right? It feels good. I'm not getting any sort of like a blurring effect. I was trying to compare it to the Charlotte Tilbury, the flawless filter, which I ended up buying a larger one for because I'm obsessed. And I still think I like the Charlotte one better, but I'm trying to figure out why. I'm gonna swatch them side by side. So Say is much more like gel-like in consistency and sort of fades out to nothing. Whereas there is a little bit of pigmentation in the Charlotte Tilbury one. So I think that's the biggest difference, at least to me. It feels very nice. I do like glowy skin. It's not like wowing me though. But now let's go on to the most expensive and the most disgusting looking product that we're gonna be testing today. And it's by Chanel. Let me, let me pull and see. And oh, I, I don't even like it. I do wanna say if you have, um, I'm gonna butcher the name of it, where you don't like like lots of little dots and just warning you now, you are not gonna like this section and I will put a little timestamp here for where you can continue on. But this is the Le Beige's Water Fresh Complexion Touch Foundation. And I don't know if you can see it from here, but it is dotted. Do you see that? Because there are pigmentation dots in here and then it's sitting in this like serum basically. And as you apply it, they're going to break open and create this like beautiful finish to the skin. But the application is just really weird looking. It comes with like a little brush. So generous, thank you Chanel. And people seem to be really loving it because it was very hard to find a shade that could possibly work for me. Also the swatching system on Chanel, don't like it. It's really hard to figure anything out there. But um, let's try it. Put a little bit. See that? It's kind of this weird, kind of goopy, separated, I don't know. I tried to zoom in a little bit too so that you guys can see 
what that consistency kind of looks like. See what I mean? It has like these little dots in it. So weird. Let's grab the <laughs> little, little brush and let's like work this in here. Oh, all right. Okay, you know what? Like, look at that. It is <laughs> giving me some coverage. That's coverage. And like, that's what my skin looks like. I, I don't have any, I, I know that some people do filters and stuff on their videos. I don't know how to do that and don't want to. So <laughs> I want you to see all of the pores and lines because you know, humans. But like, can you see? how well that is covering, wow. Oh, okay. Okay, Chanel and your goopy foundation. I mean, the brush is fine. I feel like you didn't need to add that because if you're buying Chanel foundation, you probably are also gonna buy a brush. The brush is just very small. It's like those, you know, those um, sponge tip applicators? Like, no, no one wants that. But like, I think that looks nice, right? I think it looks good. It looks good. I understand. The hype now. I, I get it now. All right, you know what? That that so far is my favorite product. The most expensive, the grossest, and also the best. And since we're zoomed in anyway, like let's continue on with concealer because I want I want to see that up close. And this is the Too Faced Born This Way Ethereal Light Illuminating Smoothing Concealer. Again, with the brands I haven't used in a really long time, Too Faced just came out of nowhere. People have been stating that this is their new favorite concealer. Like this is the next of the next, you know? 24 hour wear, waterproof, sweat and humidity resistant, non-creasing, moisture all day. Like it's ticking all the boxes for me. So I'm kind of excited. I bought two different shades because I, I never know what shade to buy. I seem to be buying a lot of ones that are too yellow even though they are stated as neutral. So I bought one that has more of a pinky undertone to mix with a shade that I think is more my style. A little pink rosiness under the eyes, never hurt anyone. So this is the shade Oatmeal, kind of like a mildly pinky fair shade. And then I also got Pecan. Do you say Pecan or Pecan? Pecan just came out of nowhere, but I don't, eat them, so I don't, I don't know. I decided to be fancy today. And then that is Pecan, which is way more my shade. I don't know what I was thinking with oatmeal. I think we all contemplate oatmeal sometimes. But maybe this will look good like right in the inner corner, right? A little bit right there, kind of brighten it maybe. And then I'll do a little bit of the other one here. Cause my under eyes haven't been the greatest. I've been waking up at like 5 a.m. for no reason. I'm not overly stressed. I'm not awoken by anyone or anything. It's just I'm awake and sitting there, lying there, sad. Oh, this dries in a lot faster than I was expecting. Oh, okay, I should not have just talked for a little bit there. I thought because this is moisturizing that it it wouldn't <laughs> do that. It's like, yeah, no, I have some time. It is much more creamy than I was expecting. I was expecting something similar to the Say with the kind of gel-like consistency. It is not, it is very creamy. It is fairly full coverage. I'm just gonna do a, like a dot of the oatmeal because I really liked how that looked on the inner corner and I feel like Pecan is starting to look a little yellow. Really the ultimate test is gonna be how heavy this feels or looks by end of day. Knowing, again, I have a fairly lightweight foundation on. So like this is pretty full coverage. I'm gonna put a little bit on my chin here on this random zit. Maybe also this one. And let me know while I'm blending this in, any products that you have come across recently that you think we should test out next. Leave them down below. Like that's covering really well. I think I like how it looks. I'm trying to evaluate it knowing that I have a very lightweight foundation on, but I think that looks good, right? But let's finish it up with some stuff, shall we? Let's zoom out a bit. This is very, like, we're very close right now. There we go, that's better. Just wanna put on a little bit of the powder. Oh, first actually. Ooh, do my pores look different? This is a good question. Honestly, I think they look a little bit better on this side. Let's see if that, continues once I, I set everything, but so far, I was wondering if that was gonna be a big mistake. I use like a big fluffy <laughs> blush brush for my <laughs> cream bronzer. I just I didn't have any clean brushes. I'm in that no brushes are clean phase. Dang, this NARS bronzer just really gets me. I really like it. <laughs> I do want the lighter shade though. I think it's currently sold out, but I do want it when it does come back in stock. Look how bronzy. 
So pretty. Went a little bit too far inwards, but we can, we'll blend it out. It'll, it'll be fine. It's not that big a deal. It's my motto for the rest of 2022. It's not that deep. Work got you stressed? It's not that deep. Kids driving you crazy? Not that deep. Makeup melting off of your face. Ooh, I just, I'm testing out a new blush from Huda, but like, do you see this? Share the love because it's sort of like a, see that? I have never seen a brand do that before. Huh, I'm gonna immediately ruin it, but I like it. That's very clever. That's a beautiful shade too. Tangerine, oh, I just have this chokehold on me. Cannot get enough of tangerine blushes. Oh, that's so pretty. I wasn't intending on testing that for a video, but it just sort of popped up in, in my PR. So <laughs> just like a little bonus. All right, now let me finish it up like that. There we go, completed. So for our first impression, everything is sitting well. I am noticing that there isn't really anything to notice with the, <laughs> the matte primer that I, like, it looks the same on both sides. If it helps it stay on better and I don't get shiny later, maybe that's worth it. But as usual, I will do a full day wear test for you guys and we will check in tonight and see how everything looks. So. See you in a bit. All right guys, hi, what's up? End of day. Let's talk about it. So mascara has held up quite well, actually. I'm not noticing a ton of fallout under my eyes, which is great. The concealer I think is, is continuing to hold, like I'm not noticing any creasing. It's felt nice and hydrated. I'm just not noticing a ton of coverage under here, I think, but I might just be fooling myself on this, but I think that it's less I don't know, less shiny on that side than this side? It's really hard to tell, honestly. Did my pores look any better? Tell me honestly. And then the foundation, I think it still looks very soft. Like there was coverage for sure, but it wasn't like aggressive amounts, you know? But it sort of played nicely throughout the day and it's not like rubbing off or anything. I didn't use a setting spray or anything. I think out of the five, I think the foundation is actually my favorite, which surprises me. It is expensive, but it gave a really, really nice finish to the skin and I think it's held up quite well. I still like to say like illuminating gel. I think that was also really beautiful, but having tried it in direct comparison to the Charlotte Tilbury, I do think I have a slight preference for that one. It still was like, it's really nice though. And then the least favorite, I mean, none of them were really terrible. So it, it's hard to say, but I think, I mean, the milk makeup one is probably one I'm not going to be using a ton of. I didn't notice like instant results and not a noticeable enough difference for me, especially as someone who doesn't love a soft matte finish anyway. So let me know in the comments if you have tried any of these products or if there are other products out there that we should try out for another round of these videos. I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys all next week.